Hello everyone. Welcome to Three Fourths Home. This is a short game that takes place over a single phone conversation. It's made by Bracket Games, and you can grab it from the official site, as well as from itch.io. I'll have links to all of that in the description. Alright, let's begin. Yep, let's start from the top. Alright, we gotta start driving here. Let's get on the road. Hello? Kelly? Where are you? On my way home. From where? Where did you go? I took a drive. In this weather? Why? I... I needed some time alone. Christ, Kelly. You could have told someone you were heading out. Sorry, I'll, I'll let you guys know next time. You better. I was worried sick for a minute there. Like I said, I'm sorry. I know you're used to living on your own. But now that you're back home, you have to let us know if you're going to be gone. Jesus, Mom, I'm not a kid. You may be 23, but house rules still apply. I just want you to be considerate. I'm 24, Mom. Shit. That just makes me feel old. But it doesn't matter. The rules are still the same. So, where are you? Uh, the McCarthy Fields, I think. Way out by the power station? Yeah, I can see it from here. You're a good 20 miles out, then. You okay on gas? Should be. I've got half a tank. That should be enough. Unless that sensor is acting up again. Dad got that fixed. When did he do that? Last week. Huh. You got him to leave the house for it? Color me surprised. Okay, so before I continue, let me uh, talk about what's going on. So... You actually have to drive the car while you're actually doing the conversation. So you have a conversation tree here that you can uh, choose between. But you can also take your foot off the gas, or in this case my finger off the D key, to stop, to stop driving. And then everything just slows down to pretty much a standstill. So you actually have to be... Your right hand is basically doing the conversation and your left hand is doing the car driving. And you can also mess around with the, with some of the things in the car. For example, you can turn off the lights. Which would be a terrible idea. Incredibly unsafe. You can turn off the wipers. Although I can't actually tell if they're on or off. You can even mess with the tape deck. Or even honk the horn. So you can kind of fiddle around with the, uh, the car's controls inside while you're driving. Okay. So an interesting thing that this game seems to allow you to do is it allows you to choose... It allows you to paint your own version of... your It allows you to create your own relationship with your family. So we're just talking about how Dad had fixed the... the gas meter in my car. And then Mom says, you got him to leave the house for it? Color me surprised. And then I get to choose from two options. He insisted or it took some convincing. 
So I get to decide how I want my relationship to be. You know, do I want him to be... Am I going to choose to have him as the person who is kind of trying to uh, help me all the time and trying to support me and he's like really uh, worried about my safety and all of that and get everything, getting everything fixed? Or do I want to paint him as kind of the, the lazy guy that I need to prod to get him to do anything for me? So I get to choose. It certainly seems that Mom thinks he's the kind of person that would take some convincing. Because she said, color me surprised. I guess, let's go with that. It took some convincing. That, I believe. Either way, what were you thinking driving in this weather? It, it seemed fine when I left. How long ago did you leave? The clouds rolled in hours ago. You guys were still asleep. Even your dad? He would have been up by five. No, I saw him outside when I left. Him in that damn garden. He wakes up every day like he's still got a job to, to go to and just spends the day elbow deep in the dirt instead. But he can't grow a damn thing. Bless his heart. I already had a few tomatoes. <laughs> I bet he told you that. It's two tomatoes. He's out there right now trying to cover them up from the rain. Why? Hell if I know, I've never heard of protecting a plant from the rain. <laughs> I can say, is he drunk? <laughs> um, I don't know if that's meant jokingly or actually seriously. Maybe he's actually prone to drinking. Maybe that's something I can decide for myself. Hmm. That's weird. You're telling me. It'll be a miracle if he doesn't fall flat on his ass trying to walk out in the mud with those crutches. <laughs> Take a picture if he falls? <laughs> That's a major dick move. Um, how's his leg today? He said it was hurting him earlier, before the storms hit. How bad? Uh, just a second, I'll check the trash. Okay. Five beers bad. Oh god. So he drinks? To get rid of the pain? That is, that's not good. That's not good. Yikes. I don't understand it. Really. How someone's leg can hurt when there's, well, no leg. But I'm no doctor. It's called Phantom Pain. I know what it's called. I've been to all the appointments with him out in Omaha. Is five normal? Only on the really bad days. He's been doing better since you came home. I think he's just been happy to have you around. What's different about today? It's probably the weather. We haven't had a storm like this all year. So I, th I think it just hit him hard. Does he ever talk about it? What? The accident? Or the pain? Um... Hmm. Good question. The pain. Oh lord, he won't shut up about it when it hurts. Moaning and groaning. I have half a mind to think he just does it for the attention. Give him a break, Mom. Your dad doesn't need any sympathy, Kelly. Just a firm kick in the ass every now and then. Well, my mind's on it. How'd that interview that your uh, dad set up for you go? It went... okay, I guess. Just okay? Once again, I get to decide what happened. You can also zoom in, by the way. Get a closer view. Let's stick with that for a little bit. Change of pace. Actually, it's kind of... Oh! We're out of the... Cornfields. I 
Actually, the camera gets kind of jittery when you zoom in, so let's uh, keep it zoomed out. And we're back in the cornfields. Hmm. Bad, good, or I don't know. I, I don't know what to think about it. What does that mean? I don't know if I want the job. Why? Do you think you're too good for it? No, it's just... Just what? After everything, it... It feels like losing. You worked hard. Went to college. But this family's fallen on hard times. You included. Shit happens. It's not losing if you're staying afloat. I don't want to get stuck here. If you think I'm going to let you grow old in this town like me, you've got another thing coming. Things will get better. And dad's disability payments? Hopefully the claim is approved soon. Is he still outside? I thought I heard him come in a minute ago. Where the hell did he get to? They <laughs> sent a search party. <laughs> Let's go with that. Let's lighten the mood a little bit. Send a search party. <laughs> Just a second, I'm gonna go look for him. Okay. David? Hello? David? Mom, why are you yelling? I'm looking for your dad. Have you seen him? He's upstairs. He was covered in mud. Are you mad at him? No, honey, I'm not mad at him. What's he doing up there? Are you mad because he got mud on the carpet? He what? Oh, Jesus, what was he thinking? You only say that when you're mad. He's taking a shower. Okay, you're right. I'm mad now, but not at you. Good, I didn't get mud on the floor. If I got mud on the floor, would you be mad at me? That depends. Don't do it and we won't have to find out. I wasn't going to. Who are you talking to? Your sister. You want to talk to her? No, there's, there's a tornado watch. I'm going to watch the news. Are you sure? Yeah, someone needs to watch the news, just in case. Where is Kelly? She should be somewhere with the basement. Is she somewhere with the basement? Uh, she's on her way home. Tell her she should drive fast, but not too fast. Getting in a car wreck would be bad, too. Not as bad as a tornado, but still very bad. Why don't you tell her? I'm gonna watch the news. Someone needs to watch the news. If you say so, Ben. Keep me updated. Did you catch all that? Yeah. <laughs> Ben's still yelling at me to tell you to drive faster. But not too fast. Ooh, trees in the background. Zoom in again. Your dad tracked mud all the way up the stairs. Christ almighty. I'm not cleaning this up. He can do it himself. It could set in if you wait. I'll let you clean it then. Uh, I think dad's got it. Uh-huh. So, how's Ben doing? Oh, you know how he gets when it storms. He's been talking about how it wasn't in the forecast. When he hasn't been locked up in his room, I mean. What was he doing in there? Writing, I think. It's all he seems to do lately. What was he writing? Oh, I don't know. 
He never lets me read any of it. It's been good for him, though. He's been focused like I haven't seen him in a long time. Usually he'll focus on something really intensely for a short time. But he gets frustrated so easily and gets so... aimless. Like with the guitar. He was so into that when you lived here. But once you were gone, he just... stopped, stopped caring about pretty much everything. He's not playing anymore? No, he stopped maybe a month after he left for school. He didn't really have anything to focus on after that. It was even worse after we pulled him out of school. Until he picked up writing last winter. It's been a blessing. Wow, how did I not know that? Guess you didn't ask, or haven't really paid that much attention. I found this guitar pick. Yeah? I was gonna give it to him. Well, you can still try to give it to him. I just sort of figured he'd still be into it. You were really out of touch there for a while, Kelly. Damn. Wait, here's your father. David, what the hell were you doing out there? I told you I was covering up I was covering up my tomatoes. The storm's a bad one. I didn't want them to get beat up. I've never heard of anyone doing that, David. Well, Nora, just because you haven't heard of it doesn't mean that it's not a smart thing to do. You tracked mud all over the carpet, too. Look at that. Ah, god damn it. I'll clean it up. Sorry. Dad, you said a bad word. Mom, he's not allowed to say that. If I'm not allowed to say it, he's not allowed to say it. Sorry, bud. You're right. I'll put a dollar in the jar. That's $27. I get to buy a game when it's $50. That's what you said. That's the deal. Sometimes I wonder if you do that on purpose. I'll never tell. Who's on the phone? It's your daughter. That so? Where is the girl? Here, you talk to her. I'm done playing go-between. Don't you want me to clean this up? Just take the phone. Yes, darling. Oh, shut up. Miss Kelly! Hey, Dad. Where the hell are ya? Oh, I missed whatever the previous dialogue thing was that I said. Ah, shit, that's a good 15 miles out in the middle of nowhere. What are you doing out there? $28. <laughs> good one, Dad. Whoops, that one wasn't on purpose. You do do it on purpose. Shh, don't tell your mother. The secret's safe with me. I knew I could rely on you, baby girl. <laughs> baby girl. Ew, dad. Ah, uh, you're too grown up for that now, are you? Since I was eight. That's news to me. So what are you doing way out there? I went to the old barn. My parents' place? Yeah. How'd it look? I haven't been out there since... Since the accident. Oh, that's where the accident happened. You know, I just realized I've been looking at the text down below so much that I haven't been looking at what's up here. It's a bunch of wind turbines. Look at that. Actually, zooming in makes it harder to see. Let's honk the horn for no good reason. Yeah, so I went to visit the place where the accident happened. The accident that lost him his leg. Hmm. Um. Still standing. Won't be surprised if this storm knocks it down. The place was leaning half over last time I saw it. 
I can take you out there. Oh, God. D mm. Would he really want to go to the place of his accident? I don't know if I want to prod that deeply. I... Do I want to say that? I can take you out there? I mean, he's obviously having trouble dealing with it. The pain, and probably at the same time, just the emotional damage. Talking about it could be good. Could be bad. I'm gonna go with it, okay. I can take you out there. Nah, I don't want to. I don't want to see it like that. I probably should I prod deeper? Okay, I'm gonna prod a little bit deeper. Like what? All fallen down. It's the last link I have to my parents. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to remember it like that. Not on the ground. That's a deep for you. What can I say? The storm has me feeling real deep. Ah, shit, this damn leg. <laughs> well, there's some more money in the swear jar, but, uh, yeah, forget that for the time being. Is it that bad? Worst it's been in a while. It must be the storm. Atmospheric pressure changes and all that. It's the damnedest thing, though. Weird feeling. Hurting where there's nothing left to hurt. I'm sorry, Dad. Yeah, well, it could be worse, couldn't it? Are you taking anything for it? Actually, before I say that, I just realized that just... brought up a really interesting question. I was thinking... Why, you know, if he's in so much pain, why isn't he on painkillers of some sort? But then I just realized... Do painkillers do anything for phantom pain? I I have no idea. I really don't know anything about it. I... hmm. That's an interesting question I'd have to look into. Okay. Are you taking anything for it? No pain meds. I think I just said anything else? A drink now and then helps. You sure that's the best way? It's the way that best helps me. Dad, there has to be something else. Would you rather I'd be hopped up on some prescription junkie pill? Junkie pill? Painkillers, Kelly. This isn't any better. No, but it's cheaper. What about Ben? And Mom? What about them? Would you rather I hobble around like a zombie, angry at the world because I can't get past the pain? There has to be another way. There is, but listen to me. We can't afford it. Drinking gets me through the day. It makes me feel like myself again. It makes me feel capable of... of not being this broken old man. Mom said you'd been doing better. I have been. Most days. Since you got home, it's, it's felt like we're a family again. For the first time in years, I felt... younger. Like I have a purpose. But today, for some reason, this storm, it... came out of nowhere and it... Are you okay? I'm fine, I'm... Listen. This isn't the time to have this conversation, okay? Your brother's giving me this funny look and... We'll talk about this later, okay? Promise? I promise, baby girl. Okay. So, uh... What were you up to out at my parents' place, then?
thinking. What about? Us. Things looking good? Could be better. You're damn right they could be. And they will be. I hope. I hope you're right. Who knows? Maybe our luck will turn around. Your mom could find a better job, my disability could go through, Ben could start seeing his new doctor in Omaha. You could put that degree to work. Hell, my garden might even pull through. What were you doing out there earlier, anyway? I was covering up the tomatoes. That's weird, Dad. It keeps them protected. From... water? <laughs> no <laughs> I just love this subplot of covering up the tomatoes, it's amazing. <laughs> it's unbelievably hilarious to me for some reason. <laughs> no, Kelly, not from water. Though if it floods, we'd have a whole mess of other problems. Okay, what from, then? A storm like this, we could get some nasty wind and hail. Take the tomatoes right off the vine or bruise them up. That happens, next thing you know, they'll rot off the vine. It's only two tomatoes, though. <laughs> There's almost nothing to protect. But, I mean... It's two tomatoes. I mean, it's, it's not none. It is something to protect. It, Okay, okay, okay. I guess that makes sense. See? Always doubting your old man. I may be a bit of a fool, but there's a process to it all. And a bit of a drunk? Oh god. That doesn't... Is, it, is that meant in a joking way? Because it doesn't sound very funny. Uh, about what we were talking about earlier. Here we go again. I'm only worried... Are those the t tornado sirens? Yeah, I was just gonna say, what the hell is that noise? I thought maybe it was like weird whistling wind. Um, hmm. I can hear them too. A tornado. They're showing it on the news. Okay, Ben, you know the drill. Downstairs. I wanna watch it on the news. Benjamin, now. Most tornadoes only stay on the ground for a few minutes and travel less than 10 miles. This one is 12 miles away. Ben, now! Hey, I'm gonna let you go, okay? Um... Yeah, now I'm thinking, how long is it gonna be till I get home? Uh... Is it near me? No, it's east of here. You should be fine. Okay. You guys be safe. Don't you dare let her off that phone, David. She needs to pay attention to the road, Nora. I'm hanging up. Like hell you are. You keep her on that goddamn phone. I'll listen to her getting sucked up into a tornado before I have to sit around and just worry about it. There would be so much debris that her phone would be destroyed before he could hear her get sucked into the tornado. Also, you have to put two dollars in the jar. She'd get on, she could get in a wreck, especially with this wind. You would probably be able to hear her get in a wreck, unless the phone got thrown from the car or if it was crushed. Okay, bud, enough of that. You're gonna give your mother a heart attack. Ask her if she can see anything. Christ, Nora, here, you ask her. Talk to your mother, Kelly. Okay. Kelly, can you see anything out there? Just rain. No hail? No, just rain. The tornado was east of here. If Kelly went to Grandpa's house, she's northwest of here. She wouldn't see a tornado unless there was another one, which is very possible. I just wanted to make sure, Ben. If Kelly gets sucked into a tornado or gets in a car wreck, can I have her computer? Benjamin! 
She won't need it. If she's not using it, no one will be. It wouldn't be fair if I couldn't have it. Okay, bud. I, I think that's fair. If Kelly gets sucked into a tornado, I'm sure she'd be okay with letting you have her computer. What about her room? Please, Ben, that's enough. I tell you what. We'll leave her room on the table. You never know. We could get some damage here and her room might have a giant hole in the ceiling. If I were you, I'd wait and see on that investment. Alright, that's a good point. Your brother sometimes. God bless him. Let me talk to him. You sure about that? Yeah. Okay, you asked for it. I take it he's the kind of person that likes to talk a lot. Ben, here. Talk to your sister. I don't want to. You can ask her about that computer. Let me have the phone. Dad says I can have your computer if you crash or get sucked into a tornado. <laughs> Hello do you do, Ben. He also said that I might be able to have your room, but I'm holding off to see if it's more damaged than mine after the storm before I commit. Smart business. It's just common sense. Anyone who thought about it would come to the same conclusion. I guess you're right. You guess or you know. You shouldn't have to guess if I'm right or not. I either am or I'm not. You are definitely right. Mom and Dad are arguing in the corner. They don't think I can hear them. What are they arguing about? Mom thinks we should be in the storage room on the east side of the house because she says it's further underground. Is it? No, one of the walls is only halfway covered. She's also afraid that the water heater in here could explode. If that happens, we'd be killed even if we were in the other room. We'd burn to death. So you guys are in the safest room. We are least likely to be killed by a tornado if we are in this room. But there's no guarantee in either room. Tornado and debris are unpredictable. Sounds like you've thought this out. It's just common sense. Are you scared? Yes. I could tell. How? You're not even here. You're talking really fast. Oh. Do you want to do a story? Like we used to? I already wrote one today. Oh. Do you want to read it to me? I left it in my room. I, I would get it, but Mom and Dad would yell at me because it's too dangerous to go upstairs during a tor during a tornado warning. Ah, uh, well, they're right. They're right, you know. It isn't safe, I know. I could just tell you the story. I remember it. Wow, he can remember the whole thing? How long is it? Um... You remember the whole thing? Yes. I have an excellent memory. Oh, that's right. Are you ready? Uh, wait, what's it called? Untitled. Oh. Well, um, okay then. Are you ready now? Yeah. A village sat in a wide valley cut high in the mountains. It was a place of plenty, a gash of green in the otherwise cold slate rising above on all sides. A small village of people called the place View, though those who lived higher in the mountains, mining for a precious glints of yellow and blue, called it the Trough. Those in the valley treated this name as an insult, for they thought it was a name unfit for their fair village. The people of View, or the Trough, had lived there for centuries. They were mostly farmers, though a fair number of merchants made a home in the valley for most of the year, save for the month when they would venture upward into the mining towns to sell the harvest's bounty at a premium. They would return home with bags filled with 
chips of yellow and blue tied to their fine leather belts, clinking brightly with the wealth. The next year, they would trade half of their shining flints to the farmers for a share of the harvest that they would, in turn, cart up to the mining villages yet again. Food flowed up and outward from the valley, and the yellow and blue would trickle down, gathering in the valley like a collection basin. This continued for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. Dozens of generations of farmers, of farmer fathers and merchant sons were born, grew wealthier, and were buried beneath the plush, plush pasture of the valley. Until the beast descended. The mining folk in the higher reaches of the mountains had passed tales of the beast around for as long as their history stretched. At the highest peak of the northernmost mountain, they said, lived the beast. It watched in all directions through slit eyes, biding its time until it would enact a calamity. It was a nightmare of immense and terrible power, the miners would whisper, a thing of abject cruelty. But it was also a patient creature. It waited until it felt ready to unleash such cruelty and malice that its ravenous hunger for chaos would be sated. Some believe it waited until enough infants cried out with newborn wails to descend from its perch and devour each and every last babe. Others believed it was simply waiting until an age of plenty before cascading down an era of sickness and madness, of fire and char and blood upon all those it peered upon from the mountaintop. And one day, after hundreds of generations of farmers and traders had lived and died in the valley, it appeared in view. The beast had risen in the trough. It appeared without warning, with neither sound nor fury. It was simply there. Curled atop four legs, steaming breath rising from a black maw, leathery wings folded in on its hulking shape. It towered over the center of the village, ominously silent. It did not move. It did not seem to be living, save for the seeping steam billowing from its slime-slicked snout. At first, the people of view peeked at the beast from behind shuttered windows, sneaking glances from the safety of embroidered drapery. An hour passed, then two, and when the sun had reached its highest point, the people began to emerge from their homes to approach the creature. The beast seemed to be sleeping. The bravest souls crept close enough that those looking on would later say that their figures seemed darkened, as if the beast leashed the light off their skin. The people of view, or the trough, gathered to discuss what was to be done. The beast slumbered, but for how long? Why did it sleep? And perhaps most worryingly of all, how had it arrived in their valley? Not a soul had seen its arrival. It was almost as if the thing had simply materialized in the center of the village. Or, some proposed, it had emerged from the earth itself. But if that were the case, how had the soil, their valuable, rich, rare earth, the source of their plenty and their affluence, birthed such a terrible creature? The villagers decided to stay in their valley. The creature slept, and the creature breathed. With each breath, its skin rolled, animating the thorny black scales into a roiling obsidian briar. But it did not rouse. It did not move. It did not rain terror from the skies, nor did it consume children by the score. It slept. The farmers continued to tend their land. The merchants made their yearly trek up the treacherous trails to collect what little chips of wealth the miners had collected in exchange for the farmer's yield, Year after year, however, there seemed to be a little less. A little less harvest. A little less yellow and blue passed around in the snowy alcoves carved from unforgiving rock. A little less green in the valley. A little less light. This continued for twenty years, until the day it began to rain. The people of View, or the Trough, watched the clouds roll in, not from the south, whence the clouds usually arrived laden with water from a faraway sea, but from the north, 
where there was but ice and stone and mountain. And, on the highest mountain, the beast. The rain draped the valley in a dampness that did not relent, but instead crept into every corner. The mountains themselves seemed to sweat and pour water into the valley. The water carried with it a quiet rot. The first harvest after the rains began produced a meager crop, and what little could be gathered was black with mold before the merchants had a chance to trade for their yellow and blue. Their livestock fared no better. The animals began developing weeping sores that became infected and killed with a quick fever. That winter, the people of the trough, or view, watched one another waste away as they began to starve. The next harvest was even worse. Every last crop had turned mealy and infested before midsummer. By the last of the season, the last of the livestock were dead. That winter, the people of the trough watched one another, one another descend into a state of hungry madness, devouring the rotting wood slothing from their homes in slimy heaps and their fine leather belts that once had yellow and blue, now sprouting spores of black mold. The village and its residents were rotting away. The beast slept. As the rains from the north continued into their third year, the few remaining people in the trough began to prophesy about the beast. It had come and brought with it great devastation, they could agree. It had brought the rains from the north, and it had brought a rot to the village that would not relent. Squatting in what little remained of their crumbling homes, they dreamt of the day that the beast would be satisfied, when it would wake and leave their valley, and allow them to farm the land and trade with the miners for their bits of wealth yet again. The time will come, they said, when the beast will wake from its slumber and spread its wings, reaching from one end of the valley to the other. And with a beat of those mighty wings, it will ascend aloft a squall. I just realized there is something very interesting in the background. There was a bird, but I think I saw something else in a flash of lightning. I was looking down more than up, though. I need to go back and check it out. But yeah, I think I saw something up there. Aside from the bird. Clever, clever, clever. And the wind will lift away our rot. The villagers waited for this day to come. A generation came and went, born into the rain, and long rotten in the moldy dirt. There were very few, but still clung to the hope that the beast would finally feel it had caused enough ruin and return to its mountain perch. The beast slept. Until it did not. The day the beast awoke, the villagers celebrated. They watched it stretch its long, horrible form into shape, hide shuddering as it shook the decades of rain from the thorny scales. They sang to the beast as it stood uncertainly and reared on its haunches, unfolding the scarred leather wings from one end of the valley to the other. The time of the beast's departure had finally arrived. The time had come for the cleansing wind. The beast beat its wings, emitting a tired and ugly groan as it lifted from the sodden earth. With a final sigh, it shot high into the air, sending a great gust of wind through the valley that toppled what dismal dwellings remained haphazardly standing. The valley was wiped clean. The villagers were knocked from their feet by the rush of wind. As they struggled upright, they felt the sun on their skin for the first time. They rejoiced, their pale forms dancing in a pitiful display of frailty. They could return to the ways of their ancestors. They could know plenty. They planted their first crop before the grass had even greened, with a newfound acuity for the hunger pains that plagued them constantly. But the grass did not wax green, and the crops did not grow. The decades of rain from the north had left the earth poisoned. There was no going back. They would not know plenty, nor would they silence the constant mutterings of their stomachs. 
Their rot had been lifted. In its place? Sterility. The sun shone, but it was on a new land. A land turned to jagged, unforgiving slate, where perhaps bits of yellow and blue could be scavenged if one dug deeply enough to find a petrified leather belt. That's the end. You remembered all that? I don't have it with me to read it. I obviously remembered it. Did you like it? I did. I'll print you a copy. What were you doing at Grandpa's house today? Oh my god, the rain's getting really bad. Uh. Whoa, don't you want to talk about the story? No, if you liked it, that's all I wanted to know. Um. I have a couple of questions. Like what? What inspired you to write that? I wanted to write it. But what made you want to? I just wanted to write a story. Fair enough. Will you answer my question now? I answered yours. I was just visiting. But there's no one left there to visit. I, I just wanted to see it. Oh. Why didn't you ask if I wanted to go? We can go together tomorrow. Okay. Did you find anything there? Something for you, actually. What is it? A guitar pick. Why would I want a guitar pick? Um... He could use it. I mean, he doesn't play anymore. But maybe he'd want to start playing. Um... It's cool. I don't think so. We can play together. I don't want to. Why not? We used to. That was before. Now I don't care about guitar. Oh. You can keep the guitar pick. I don't want it. I, I will. Are you crying? I'm just... sad. Is it because that Frankie person kicked you out of your house? Ben, I don't... Or is it because you had to move back home since you couldn't find a job? Mom and Dad are worried about both those things. They think you're sad because of them. Uh, ben... Okay, Ben, give me the phone. Kelly's crying and I want to know why. I know, honey, but let me talk to her, please. Come here, bud. Help me wind up this radio so we can listen to the weather report. Did I do something wrong? Did I do something wrong, Kelly? No, you're fine. Go help Dad. Okay, I'm... I'm sorry you're sad. Hey, Kelly. Are you okay? Not really. No. Ben, he, he doesn't understand that he can't... Ben is fine. He looks up to you so much, you know? I know. Where are you? Are you close to home? I can't tell. It got really dark. I can't believe the sirens are still going off. This might be the longest tornado warning we've ever had. They're saying two more have touched down in the county. Listen, when you get home, we'll all sit down and have a talk. I think we need it. I'd like that. You really can't tell where you are? Five miles out, maybe? Okay, make sure you... 
What's that noise? Kelly, I'm gonna have to let you go. I. Mom? I, the, and, Mom, you're breaking up. But. Mom? Kelly, I. Mom? Are you there? Hello? Shit. Wow, that was wonderful. That was really great. Such a simple idea, but so powerful. It's a wonderful mixture of just really strong writing and uh, a simple kind of, I'm not even sure I want to call it gameplay, but more just like a simple visual setting for this conversation to happen, you know? Watching your car driving in the rain, seeing how the rain is getting worse and the storm is getting worse and everything's getting louder and more chaotic as your, your life seems to become more chaotic. I just loved how the, the visuals and what you were doing just mixed so well with what was happening in the writing, in the story. That was beautiful. I'm incredibly impressed with it. That was just wonderful. Wow. Okay, well, I think I'll leave that there. Um... I've got some more things I want to say about it, actually, but I think I'll save that for another video, a uh, more review type thing. One thing I do want to mention before I go, though, is that if you do like this sort of a game, um, you might want to watch a movie called Lock. That's L-O-C-K-E. Uh, it just came out pretty recently, and it actually has a very similar kind of story setup to this in the sense that it's a movie that takes place entirely over a car ride with one person talking on the phone with a bunch of different people. And that movie was absolutely incredible, and I think if you like this, I think you'd really enjoy that as well. It really goes to show that you don't need uh, anything huge, big, flashy, uh, you don't need action. That's something I've... I feel like I uh, relearn over and over again is that you really... The only thing you need for an engaging piece of art, be it a game or a movie or a book or whatever, is just well-written, engaging characters. That's really all you need. And this had that perfectly. It was wonderful. That's some of the strongest writing I've ever seen in a game. Just beautifully written. Alright, so I uh, hope you enjoyed coming along with me on my my uh, literal and figurative ride through three-fourths home. Thank you for watching.